Hello there, welcome back to a brand new section. We are still not on the audio editing part because remember we still have this little bit of discussion about the recording environment. And this consists of this learning consists of two stages. Okay, the first stage is that we'll actually have to learn about treating the room itself. So the room that you're using to record your audio. And this whole thing is called as the science behind it is called as acoustics. Okay, so acoustics kind of refers to controlling the science of controlling your sound. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing because you're going to find out that sound on its own is pretty random. So we really have to kind of get hold of it to make sure the output is good. Secondly, it doesn't matter if you have a treated room, but then if you still have unwanted sounds within that room, that means a lot of unwanted sounds are entering your mic, let's say some uh, dogs barking outside your uh, house or maybe some kids making some noise or the drilling noise that we heard, then that can also affect your output, obviously, right? So these two are separate uh, scenarios or things, okay? And we're going to be looking at both of them where I'll be giving you some important tips. Now, we'll be starting off with this one. That means how to treat your room because this is very important. For this, first of all, you will have to understand how the mechanics of sound work in a very simple way. So let's do this with the help of a diagram. All right, so in order to understand how sound works, we have this image in front of us, which is obviously depicting a room. And this time, just to spare you the experience of watching me draw things, I decided to just use AI to generate this image for me. And if you're interested, by the way, off topic, but if you're interested, the software that I use to generate this image is called Adobe Firefly. Fantastic AI software that you can use for free for up to 25 generations, okay? Just thought I'll throw that in. And my next course, by the way, is about using Adobe Firefly, okay? But anyway, coming back to our topic, we have this room in which you have this particular mic kept on the table. So let's assume that this is your recording environment, that the room that you're using, and you're sitting right in front of this mic. So here's... Here, here's how sound basically works in a very simple way. So let's say you're facing the mic. So think of when you start speaking, think of these sound waves like arrows, okay? So these arrows are basically going into the mic, right? Well, most of them, right? But sound actually is pretty much going everywhere. So what is happening here is, yes, some of them go into the mic, that's great. And this, like whatever is happening directly, this is called as, uh, you know, you can call it like the direct uh, audio wave. So the direct sound, okay? There's also, however, because of the environment we are in, there are bound to be some reflected sound waves also. So reflected sound waves are going to be, let's say they miss the target and... Okay, let's say they go like on top of the ceiling. Now, most of us, right, we have flat surfaces in the environment that we're recording in simply because we are in a room. What are the flat surfaces? Ceilings, walls, floors, right? And what's going to happen is this will start bouncing around now, right? Basically reflecting. And a lot of this is going to come back to the mic, not just from this, maybe this wall reflects back, right? And you can see it starts to get messy because this is happening like so fast because sound travels so fast, right? So maybe some of it hit the ceiling and it's coming back. Obviously, probably not from the ceiling because the angle will be different, but definitely from the walls, uh, sorry, not from the floor, but definitely from the walls and the ceiling It's all kind of coming back towards this mic. Now, Think of it like this, you said something, right? So think of this particular, let's say, this audio wave was carrying some words, okay? Yes, that's good that this entered, but then the reflected one, right? The reflected one, it takes more time to enter the mic. Why? Because now it's traveling more distance. So this, whatever you said, entered quickly, but whatever reflects, because it's traveling a longer distance, is taking more time to reach the mic. This is what causes echo or also called as reverb. Okay, so you must have kind of experienced this, especially in empty rooms. That's why you're going to find out later that one of the keys to solve this is not to have an empty room, but we'll talk about the solutions later on. 
So one is that, yes, because it's traveling more time, so it kind of gives you that echoey feel. The second problem is when it's reflecting back, think of it like this, it's kind of almost like an accident. It's kind of colliding with these good direct waves also. So these indirect waves are kind of hitting these direct waves, uh, which are like happening right now, but the words that you already said. So think of it like this, right? The words that you already said, because they're taking more time to come back, they're hitting the words that you're saying right now because they traveled more of a distance. But the point is this, this all is happening so quick that all this distortion and this late arriving into the microphone is basically resulting in a very, very bad audio. So you get this echoey sound and you also get like the disturbed sound waves because of these accidents. Right? That's like the simplest way to just uh, kind of understand how uh, sound basically works. So flat surfaces, the key here is that flat surfaces and hard, basically hard and flat surfaces. That's the uh, word I should have used in the beginning also. Not just flat because you're going to find out flat surfaces can be good if they're not hard. Okay, But hard and flat surfaces like tables, ceilings, floors, walls, these uh, windows probably, okay, they are not very good and they're going to cause all these issues. So I hope that now you've understood this. Now in the next video, let's see two different solutions for this. One kind of a professional solution and one kind of a solution which you can have it right now on a budget. So let's go there. All right, so the professional solution to this is to use something called as a sound absorbing panel, also called as a sound uh, proofing panel. You can also call them, you know, acoustic uh, treatment panels. There are a lot of different terms for that, but basically they are these uh, square or rectangular shaped uh, panels that you can just simply mount on the walls or the ceiling. And if we go back to our diagram here this time, so if we draw those sound waves again like this, yes, some of them are going here, but this time just think of it like this. We have treated this room and now, by the way, I couldn't find the black color in this surface. So I just uh, filled this with gray, but this, let's say, is one of uh, representing one of those absorbing panels. So this time, let's say if one of them was going like this, it just simply gets absorbed. So it's not reflecting back now. So how they work is they basically turn sound energy into heat energy. You know, that's how they just, the sound just kind of gets absorbed into the panel. But you don't have to worry about that. Point is, now we're not having that crazy reflecting scenario. Of course, wherever you've not mounted, it's going to have, but you don't always have to fill up the whole room. Even if you just do it at some of the key places, that's fine. Okay. Uh, but this is one way. Now, do I suggest this straight away to the beginners? I would probably not directly recommend that you do that. If you do, there's nothing wrong with it. But this will involve a certain amount of research into figuring out what are those places where exactly you should be putting the, the these on. Even if you do it randomly, it's definitely going to be better than recording in an empty room for sure. But I also told you earlier on that I will tell you like an on or something which can you can do right now on a budget okay which is that if you don't want to install them straight away and you or you want to do this gradually one solution to this problem is simply not to record your audio in a completely empty room with just hard surfaces so even if you have just a normal room which is just full of stuff and preferably soft kind of stuff okay the main things that i'm referring to here are carpets mattresses like something like a couch, okay, or multiple uh, couches or blankets, basically something that is thick and soft, okay, that in a way also a lot of times just helps you get rid of this echo, okay, not probably to the extent which mounting these would do, but I'm just saying that that's also an option, that just have a room full of stuff, okay, of course, if it's just full of hard stuff, that's not going to work out too well because that again will reflect in those uh, result in those reflected uh, sound waves. But carpets, mattresses, blankets, and stuff like couches do work well because right now the room that I am in, it doesn't have any of these panels. It simply has a few couches and the other stuff that I just mentioned. And since we're talking about budget solutions or so finding some alternative solutions, another solution that can you guess now from our previous learning okay, that can help you in this scenario. So the hint that I want to give you here is think of the type of mic, 
because we've learned about the types of mics in the previous video. So which type of a mic can help you here? So remember, we learned about dynamic mics and condenser mics. So in this case, something like a dynamic mic would be more preferable because again, it's gonna basically ignore uh, the reflected sound waves coming from a lot of, at least from some of the angles, right? It's mainly gonna only concentrate on that area which uh, from where, where your mouth is, right? Because that's where it's facing. So one way is to just simply use a microphone which is not very sensitive and is more directional in nature. So you would definitely wanna avoid a condenser mic. If you are using something like a Blue Yeti, like I sh showed you before, even though it is a condenser mic, make sure then you are on the cardioid pattern so that it almost kind of becomes like a dynamic mic then. It ignores uh, things happening from other angles. Another tip that we I did mention before, which can help you here, is that being close to the mic, right? So if you are close, most of the sound waves kind of just hit the mic, right? And then you have lesser of those waves being reflected back. That's why this is another reason why it's very important that the microphone should be close to the source of the sound, and that improves the quality of the sound. And finally, of course, this is the reason why we are here for this course. This is an audio editing course. Especially if you are in a room which is not treated for acoustics, I mean, it's almost mandatory, okay? Even with a treated room, it's almost mandatory, but without, it's definitely mandatory that you will have to edit the audio. For example, right now, the room that I am in, it's not treated, right? I'm not using one of these panels. I'm just relying on the stuff that is lying around the, uh, cardioid pattern on my Blue Yeti, the mic being closed because I'm using the boom arm mic stand. So I'm kind of using the other solutions here, but they will simply not work if the audio that you're hearing right now, the words that you're hearing right now, if this wasn't edited. So the audio that you're hearing right now is edited and that has to be the case if you're not treating your room. So you can see, right, a lot of solutions. Definitely, you can even go slowly about this. You can get better at it by Know, installing at some particular point of time these panels also but try with the natural solutions first because these are readily available to you but that's about it for this particular video in the next video we're going to take care of the other part which was how to avoid the unwanted sounds from coming into the mic itself so i'll see you there